He is preaching about hell. He says, in flaming fire, verse 8, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. And I want to dig into this verse because it's often misunderstood. The modern Bible versions, such as the NIV and, and uh, other popular mainline versions, they change this verse, and they make a dramatic change in the meaning of this verse by changing it. And so here's where we're going to start tonight. Let me go ahead and toss the NIV here to Brother Garrett. He's going to look up for me 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Put your finger here and go to Revelation chapter 15. Keep your finger there in 2 Thessalonians 1. Go to Revelation 15. You see, we always need to let the Bible define the Bible. If there's something in the Bible where we're not sure what it means, instead of running to a dictionary or running to man's wisdom, we should try to compare spiritual things with spiritual. And that's what I'm going to preach about in a moment. But in Revelation 15, we have almost the exact same wording that you find in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Notice that phrase in 2 Thessalonians 1. He's talking about in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, He shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Now, I'm going to tell you what that means, and I'm going to prove it to you in Revelation 15. When it says everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, that's where the everlasting destruction is coming from, from the presence of the Lord. That's what that means. And you see, we've gone through it this morning already. We saw everlasting fire, everlasting burnings, everlasting punishment, everlasting destruction now. Look at Revelation 15, and I'll show you the exact same wording to help you understand this. It says in Revelation 15, 8, And the temple was filled with smoke. This is talking about the temple up in heaven. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues and the seven angels were fulfilled. So you see there, it says the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power. Same wording. Is it because God was not there? Or was it because God was there? It was because He was there. Well, it's the same exact thing in 2 Thessalonians 1. Look back, you're in Revelation 15, just go back one page to Revelation 14. Revelation 14.10 says this, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So is hell being separated from God? No. It's being in the presence of the wrath of God, okay? So you're not separated from God. You are in the presence of the Lamb, which the Lamb, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. With that in mind, we saw it clearly in Revelation 14. They're in the presence of the Lamb. Now, does the Bible ever contradict itself? No, if it's God's Word, if it's holy, it's got to be perfect, and it can never contradict. And so if in Revelation 14 it says, hey, they are being punished in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there going to be another place that says they're separated from Jesus, separated from God? No, it wouldn't make any sense. And that's why it's clear if we use Revelation 15 and 2 Thessalonians 1 side by side, it's very clear that God's wrath is what kindles the fires of hell. Read us from the uh, non-inspired version, the NIV, Brother Garrett, 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord. Did you hear that? He said they'll be punished with everlasting destruction and they'll be shut out from the presence of the Lord. Now, is it possible to be outside of God's presence? I mean, to be shut out from the presence? No, and when you're in hell, and hopefully no one here will go to hell, hopefully everybody here tonight is saved and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior in our church, but those who go to hell will be very much in the presence of the Lord. But see, many today have tried to tone down this doctrine of hell. And I've seen it over and over again. Instead of emphasizing what the Bible emphasizes, fire, the fact that it's everlasting, the fact that it's torment, the fact that it's torture, they try to tone that down and just say, well, hell just means you're separated from God. Did you know that the Roman Catholic Church today teaches in their official doctrines that hell is not a real place? Did you know that John Paul II, the Pope that was before the current 
uh, pedophile, I mean Pope that we have right now, uh, the Pope, John Paul II, literally stood up and said, you know, hell is not a place. It doesn't have a location. He said it's just a, a state of yearning for God. It's the state of being separated from God. And yet we have independent Baptists all over America today preaching that hell is separation from God. It's not separation from God. It's when you're on fire in a literal place in the lower parts of the earth, in the bottomless pit, in the presence of the Lamb. If I make my bed in hell, I'm not going to re-preach this morning, so 